A lot of people were shocked with the news about Trump being convicted on 34 felons. And basically, there's two opposing sides that says, basically, there's one side saying that Trump deserved his convictions and that basically he is a fraudster and criminal. And then, of course, there's another opposing side that says, hey, this guy is innocent and there's a lot of crazy things going on in America that's not right, and he plans to fix it. And the people that convicted him basically want America to stay in a state of chaos. But definitely two opposing sides. I don't pick one. I just restate the facts, the statistics, as far as exactly what's going on. But definitely have a lackluster... Um, situation going on with the people in control of America. So definitely has to be a new leader, preferably a younger leader with a brighter mind. Because basically what we have going on in America, basically it's a generational war between the old minds and the new minds. So it seems like all of our presidents have been old people older people with older ideologies or older people that are associated with a lot of, you know, people with these old perspectives. And a lot of people say that Obama could have been one of these people because he was heavenly, heavily influenced by, you know, Bill Clinton, by um, George Bush, by Biden, and all of these old heads. So would be nice to see a new young person become president, someone who's basically has the mind of a young person, but then also the wisdom of a old person. So definitely a very interesting situation, but both presidents have their good and bad sides and basically perspectives because a lot of people don't like Trump due to the fact that he's not really concerned about climate change. It seems like more or less watching and observing, you know, what's most important to him, it seems like he's pushing more for fossil fuel emissions and basically basically pushing more for natural resources within America, such as natural gas and so forth. And this does have, it does have positive benefits with America's economy because a transition too quickly from fossil fuels to renewable energy could definitely destroy America. So if we do, if America does make the transition from fossil fuels to being able to run completely off of renewable energy, it should be done in a methodical, strategical way and just not overturned too quickly. Because like I said before, much of the country depends on fossil fuels and gas. So that is a perspective that makes a lot of sense. But Biden's perspective is that we need to take action now. The world is in a state of chaos. Climate change is basically going to get to the point where Earth is not going to be livable. So definitely some pros and cons on both sides. But what a interesting situation, you know, going on in today's society. I'm just kind of like in awe because I've never seen a point in history where we've had so many things going on at once with wars, diseases, flooding, political events, you know, basically moral values, ethical values being challenged in today's society. What's good? What's right? What's male? What's female? So definitely a very interesting situation. That's for sure. But I personally think that basically the only way that we can get ourselves out of this situation would be through some type of radical overturning of the government or some type of radical event because nothing is going to change the path that we're currently on with climate change. And that's exactly what the Pope recently said to us. Well, he basically said that we're on 
a road, basically on a road in, in a car that cannot be turned around. So we've done too much to the earth, to the environment, and we're too within the process and, and too within our values and morals, especially within America, to change. So we're definitely on a one-way path towards destruction, and there's not much that we can do. And that's exactly what the Pope restated to as well recently. But like I said before, our only hope would be some type of radical action. And an example of this would be Vermont being the first state to actually take fossil fuels companies accountable for climate change. But definitely a very interesting set of topics. But thank you.